RJ, let's dive in here. We have just a ton of contracting questions that get that get asked all the time. Let's start with what is one thing you have to always a, repeat yourself and explain to investors? Like you go to that first meeting and what's the one thing where it's like, all right, this is the two minute thing I'm always going to have to say, you know, regardless of what type of job it is. Sure. <clears throat> There's some things I say and some things I don't say but would love to say. So I'm going to give you a <laughs> little uh, behind the scenes here on the curtain. That's a great question. The one thing that I always have to say, people, and this is very much for my target market when you're dealing with C-class, B-class properties, is you have to understand your target market. A lot of these new newbie investors, they have a standard of living that they're very used to. They have nice tastes, nice styles. So they really want the class A asset or class A fixtures on a you know, class C asset budget. And that's just not possible. Um, so I guess very, very much off the top of my head, it's, it's very much so you got to understand your audience. You got to understand it's for a rental. You got to understand that you yourself put your, you know, they typically always have a budget. And with a lot of things they ask, um, it's outside the scope of work, outside the budget. And it just doesn't make sense for rental. So that's one thing that I do like to tell a lot of people thing on the back end that I walk away from a lot of inter interactions and I say, why'd they say that? Now I don't want to do this job. Um, people that overpromise things, I'm, I'm going to be the biggest investor you know. I'm trying to build relationships. Mm -hmm. Give me a good price and I'll give you business down the street. I'll give you business, you know, when I'm a big investor. And those are red flags for a contractor. You know, we could see right through that. And I'm guilty. You know, I probably used to say that myself. I'm sure I've said it um, <clears throat> while building my team. Hey, I got a lot of work coming for you. Um, you know, the difference is I gave them a lot of work. You know, some of those contractors I said it to and didn't give any work. I don't work with them today. And that's for a reason. Yeah. So we, we touched on budget. Let's let's go there because I think you know one thing that I have a trouble I have trouble answering because Chris and I have such a tight relationship. We just kind of roll through things and almost you know it's almost like agile for anyone who's you know works in the consulting world. We're just kind of we're very loose with it. We have we we have a an earned relationship on both sides. But when you're dealing with someone for the first time, are you typically going out there and saying, "All right, what budget am I backing into?" Or is it, are you letting it saying, okay, I'll let the scope dictate the budget and get back to you? Because it's kind of two ways to end to end up at that uh, end result. Sure, that that's a perfect question. Actually, um, I always ask for the budget. You know, with my sales background, I always ask for the budget because it makes sense to understand whether or not off the bat are we spinning our wheels here. Do you have unrealistic expectations or am I working with something um, that, that could be a great relationship? Win-win. Uh, you know, a lot of people have a concept around sales that when people ask for your budget, when people ask these types of questions, that it's only so that they could um, have an upper hand. So that I know your budget. Now I could charge you 50K for a 20K job. That's absolutely not true. You know, for a win win relationship, for somebody that's actually trying to build a relationship, you give me a budget. I could tell you whether or not it's feasible. And that way I don't have to go home, spend three days writing up an estimate, looking up insane details for a project, and then you know, you saying, oh, it's out of budget and then choosing the next contract over because he overpromised. And that's typically what happens. 